play this bad boy right here. The Prophecy. Custom Prophecy. And, um, you know, I've always played custom Les Pauls. And uh, I never thought I would ever play anything else until I played this. And it's really, it's really, really, really amazing, actually. I really like the graphite neck. And uh, the weight of it is, is perfect. You know, I get a new one when I get mad and smash them on stage, so that's good. And I play the uh, Prophecy SG. And uh, I've always played SGs. It's literally been my favorite guitar since I was a kid growing up. And it's, uh, it's awesome. It's like a SG on steroids. I like the EMG pickups. Uh, it just runs hotter. And uh, the active pickups in the um, Prophecy. And uh, I love the weight of the guitar. It's always been plus for me. So. Uh, and the look of it's just badass. They, they were used quite a lot, actually, you know, with the hot EMGs, and, I, you know, I play JCM 800 with the tube screamer all, all the time, and with these pickups, it was just unbelievably overbear like overbearing, you know, to kind of freak Terry out, because I was always squealing all the time, and, uh, but when I wasn't playing, so the solos are just sick because of this guitar right here. I've been doing music since I was a little kid. Um, I've played various instruments. Um, my first instrument was actually saxophone, randomly. But, uh, you know, then I started singing, and uh, I decided I wanted to learn bass guitar when I was about 12. You know, I've been influenced by a wide variety of, of uh, musicians. Um, I'm a huge Radiohead fan. Uh, I also love a lot of the grunge art stuff, uh, Rage Against the Machine, Alice in Chains. And then you have, you know, your classics, like the Beatles. You know, I've been real passionate about music all my life, and you know, I met these guys when I was in college in New York, and uh, it's been a great experience. I actually started playing the trumpet in the fourth grade, and then uh, I kind of did it just by default. And then um, in sixth grade, I got my first trumpet. You have set. a good mouth trumpet, though, right? They do, actually, Jules has the best mouth trumpet. Right here. Nice. But, uh, <laughs> I'm trying. I'm still trying to incorporate that in the band. Yeah. So, uh, oh. yeah. side project. Side, side project. project. <laughs> yes. But uh, yeah, I started playing drums in sixth grade and uh, got into Guns N' Roses, Motley Crue, um, went through a big Zeppelin phase. Obviously Dave John actually Bob. has a picture, and it's the best picture ever. It's in his house, and like when he was in high school, you guys used to have like, what, an 80s night? There's a picture of him and his friends dressed up like the 80s. Yeah, we actually wore the shirts one day to school, <laughs> and uh, people thought we were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I used to go to you know, all different concerts growing up, you know, OzFest every year, uh, huge Metallica fan, definitely the grunge era, Pearl Jam, all that stuff, so. Um, and then I met Rich and Julie in college, and that's kind of, we started this whole thing. I never had the patience for an instrument, and my grandmother used to sing to me in Italian when I was little, and so I used to sing back to her, and I guess it just kind of came naturally to me. So that's what I gravitated towards. I, I didn't have patience when I was a kid. And so I never, yeah, I still <laughs> yeah. don't have patience. So uh, I, uh, what's it called? So I, st I just sang and I started singing when I was probably like four or five years old. And my mom always put me like in theater groups and things of that nature. So it was, performing has always been in my blood. And then as I got older, actually, even in high school, um, there was a, a group of my friends that had a band and they would never ever let me sing in the band in high school. Like I, I sang in choir or whatever. So we were like, no, no, your voice is too clean for this. You can't be in a band. And then when I finally got to college, that's when I met Jules and, and Dave. And that's the first band. This is the only band that I've ever played in. Um, but I mean, I'm a product of, of a bunch of different music. I mean, my father's a huge, huge doo-wop guy. So growing up, you know, I, I grew up with, um, you know, that whole era, the 50s. And then, you know, as I came into my own, it was the same, a lot of the same things, you know, Guns N' Roses and Metallica. And then I had some older cousins you know, that were, you know, into Zeppelin and things of that nature, and the Doors, and, and then the grunge era, of course, but, um, you know, I think we're all heavily in influenced by the same thing, but then we also have differences, too. Well, my dad used to listen to the Doors in Vancouver when it was raining. That's so fitting. And then in a god of Vida, Iron Butterfly, it's like all I remember. So, is. Dad's also Nor Norwegian. Yeah, Norwegian, dark dude, so uh, introduced me to, like, sort of, I guess rock at that age. I saw an ACDC concert in '86. Never looked back. Always wanted to play a, an SG. It was like my first guitar and all that. So heavily influenced me. And then, um, and then basically started learning the guitar in the '90s. Well, my first instrument was the violin. Actually, first grade. It didn't last very long. Um, the third grade, I actually got a guitar and started taking guitar lessons. But um, I was just too young. By about when I was 10, I got my hands on Appetite for Destruction, the tape. Became obsessed with Slash, 
is called Justice. It comes out on February 15th, and it has been uh, a year in the making. We started actually writing the record when we were on the road, you know, here and there in sound checks and back of the bus um, on the last album cycle. And then when we got off the road in uh, January of last year, that's when we, we came to LA and we actually sat down and started writing the record. And when we started writing this record, we realized that we all had like a lot of the same feelings and it was a lot of anger and just just pissed off. And I think we felt as a band, we underachieved on our last record. Most people might see that as, you know, uh, not, not necessarily true, but you know, as an individual, you always want to exceed your expectations. And I feel like we underachieved on the last record. We didn't feel like a lot of it was because of our own actions however maybe they were but for whatever reason we were just angry and so we started writing this record and there was this constant theme that went throughout the entire record and we didn't plan for it to be that way um, it just kind of happened and overall I think we're extremely proud um, from start to finish of what this record encompasses because it's it's the record that we wanted to write as individuals we didn't really get a lot of outside pressure from anybody to write a certain kind of record. And I think that everything that led up to this point pointed us in the direction that we needed to be. So we're very proud of the record that we wrote. Yeah, I think we set out to kind of make a record that captured like the live essence of the band. You know, that's why we went with Terry Day. We just thought Terry was the type of guy that captures like, um, I guess the character and sort of the rawness of the band. You know, we'd always skirted with it on our last records as far as like trying to like, you know, people were always like, oh, you don't, the show is so much energy, you guys emit so much energy, but um, you know, we felt like Terry was the guy, and actually this record kind of has more of that live, loose feel, and um, you know, I think that's, that's the type of thing that's going like, to set, hopefully, our band apart from the rest of the time. The record coming out on the 15th um, is perfect because on the 16th we start um, our first headlining tour of this cycle, uh, and it's the Monster Energy Outbreak Tour sponsored by Epiphone and uh, Monster. And it's a great opportunity because in the touring world today, you know, um, a lot of bands are, are packaging together. So it's kind of leaving, you know, these pockets for, for bands to really not get onto bills. And so our management and us got together and uh, approached Monster and Epiphone and came up with this idea where let's do this tour where it's five bands that are all pretty young and, and you know, haven't achieved, you know, this, this great status and let's put them on the same bill and make a cheap ticket. And so basically you have five bands and most of the tickets are, you know, about 10 bucks. And I mean, that's, that's a pretty good deal. So it's, uh, it's us, it's a, a band called, is that Deals Approved? Yeah, approved. Deals Approved. <laughs> uh, Stamp of approval. It's us, uh, a band called Pop Evil, uh, a band called Hail the Villain, uh, Black Cloud Collective, which is uh, Brandon from Atreyu. It's his new band. And then uh, a band called The Ronda. So it's five bands for five bucks. And, or not five bucks, I'm sorry, for 10 bucks. It's about the music, it really is. There's not a lot of production, there's not a lot of you know, smoke and mirrors. It's, it's about the live show and the music. Well, he, yeah, what happened was awesome. he quit drinking. Yeah, he quit drinking. He quit drinking. And he discovered tea. And we so discovered caffeine. he discovered <laughs> caffeine. But it was weird because he wouldn't drink coffee. He like, had, mentally he was like, I'm off coffee, I'm off liquor and beer so he discovered tea and at Henson Studios where we recorded there was free tea free tea <laughs> and so awesome. he took it to a whole new level it went bankrupt yeah he yeah he would do so he'd save his tea tags and that was that's the whole thing we put it in a cup yeah well once we saw that he was drinking that he was like doing, and we didn't start we didn't we didn't start like not, we started not right away late a couple, in a couple days in we decided you better save the tabs and we'll you know we had like a, we had a, a, a a raffle at the end. It was an over under of how many teas he drank, and I mean it was disgusting because he would he would literally soak the tea bag, drain the tea bag, and then he, yeah, and tea, then he would tea bag himself. He would put the tea bag in his mouth. It was a lonely time. He had to get every last <laughs> drop. <laughs> every yeah, last put drop. Put the tea bags <laughs> in his mouth and sucked on the tea bags. There was eight eight monster double monsters a day, and then the four shots. shots. You would and drink then, eight of and those. And then about 20 eight, teas. The four shots, and then the, but then the teas. The average was like 18 and a half teas a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, then we yeah. counted, and then I think Terry was the winner. Seven. 
think it was 750 T's in two months. In two months. Oh, it was eight, eight something. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's sorry. Uh, yeah. I to discount. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was at least eight something. Yeah. Yeah. Eight not, not including the monster. And then he peed out a boulder this big <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from kidney stones. <laughs> it was peed pretty... out my kidney. Yeah. Yeah. Needless to say, he's off the tee. Yeah. He's back on coffee. We got him off the tee. He's back on coffee. 